All right, welcome guys. Today's video, we are right here at Wat Prahasari Ratana Mahahat. We're in Labbury. So anyway, we're gonna take a look at this temple. This is about a 13th century temple, and it's kind of the most famous uh, site here in Labbury. And uh, anyway, the, uh, the temple was built around 13th century. They're not really quite sure, but it's been renovated many times since. It's been renovated at least four times that I know about. Like uh, King Ramsawan uh, renovated it, and the latest or the last version of the renovation, I believe, was by uh, King Narai, and that was in around like the 1660s era, something like that. And I think it took like 20 years to restore it the last time. So anyway, we're gonna go check out this temple and uh, see what it looks like. And let me show you. Now getting here is absolutely perfect. You can uh, ride the train and the train station is right there. You can see they have the old steam uh, locomotive out in front of the train station. You can uh, walk right across the road and buy a ticket and here you are right at the, uh, at the ruin. Getting in here I believe it's got the normal dual pricing. So it's uh, 50 baht for a uh, foreigner or uh, 10 baht for a Thai. Which you see that pretty much everywhere. So you can see the, uh, you can buy the one big ticket for 150 baht that takes you to uh, a couple of the different sites. But it's 50 baht for a one entrant fee or a 10 baht for a tie. And this place is gigantic. It's got a bunch of stuff going on. You can see the halls over there. You can see the jetties and the big hall. And it looks like we have a tour of uh, the ties that are going in there. So this would have been the first way you came in and there would have been like a little covered, I don't know if this would have been a prayer hall, it looks like it would have been just like a covered walkway or something with like a low wall around it. And then that would have led you into the main hall and you can see they're posing for pictures over there. You can see over there has, uh, has some cool looking chetties with a different top than what you normally see. Now there, this has been added on to many different times. And actually the, uh, the la last renovation was another Ayutthaya king, King uh, Brando Ranawich or whatever his name was, I can't remember. But anyway, I believe this actually, I read over there, this might've been a robe changing pavilion for the king to change his robes whenever he had to come over here to do some religious ceremonies. So you can see the front of this building here. And they had this, uh, artwork on the front there. Most of it's kind of sloughed off and you can see they've kind of put the metal in it to try to keep that stabilized from falling off anymore. So they've done quite a bit of work over here to keep this building intact. And then you can see the temple wall here with another prayer hall over there on the side. But this would have been a cavernous hall. Now we have a Thai tour group going through here. Yeah, this building is gigantic. Holy cow, it's big. So they would have had the columns here to support the roof. And the walls are about two and a half feet thick with about an inch of plaster. And none of the detail work in any of that is remaining in here. You can still see the, the windows. Looks like they've came back and fixed this up, but it used to have the lotus shaped top which was pretty common you see in these temples over here. And then there would have been uh, five jetties right there, and then a low wall with probably some seated Buddha around it, and then this other hall that you can see over here. It's in a little better shape than this one. But this would have been tall, tall. You can see the center columns right there. It's kind of braced up to keep it from falling over, but it's probably, uh, 25 meters tall or so, it's huge. And then this looks like a uh, Buddha that's been added pretty recently for people to come in. And then the pedestal right here. And this opens up from the back and it goes right to that center prong. And you can see how the wall was constructed with the bricks. 
and then the plaster over the top of it. This is kind of cool looking. It's got the window right here that opens up right to that jetty. And then it, probably right here used to be like a platform for uh, some of the Buddha. And then it has a door on each side of the back of this, uh, this hall. And then it went over into here. So this looks like maybe used to have the walkway. So this would have been a covered walkway here and probably some Buddhas facing towards the uh, inside at each of the corners. So it would have had probably eight Buddhas on the corners as well as some probably along the uh, inside. And then you can see that chetty over there. That one's in really, really good shape. Has quite a bit of detail still left in it. And it has more over there. You can see just how big this, uh, this complex is. And then this is the center. And then this looking back at that hall here. Before we look at the center, let's look at this uh, other little hall right behind me. So this is that one. It's on kind of the south side of that, uh, the big hall when you first come in. And this is kind of cool. It has some uh, kind of the big arch doors. Now, some of these temples, they'll, they had like three entrances and uh, like the side entrances would be for the commoners and then they would have the entrance for the king and the royals to go through like one of the middle ones. So I don't know if that was what they did here, but this is a gigantic door. Holy cow, this is big. And then they had a platform inside for all the Buddhas. Now this one doesn't look like it has any windows on the side walls. The only windows, well, the only things that openings are doors. So it's got two doors over there and three on the side facing the uh, prong. And then here's another look at the, those little bases. So there's five bases for jetties. And then right here would have had a wall. There would have probably been a seated Buddha in each one of those little notches. And then it has a door over there. And then it had a little wee hand here that all that's left is the base. And then this little tiny hall. Let's see what's inside of there. That thing is in great shape. It is just almost perfect. Down at the base, it's missing a little bit of plaster and along the stairs, but it's in really, really nice shape. And then it has a door that's about to fall off. The wood has not survived very good. And something over here. Yeah, so it has a little reclining Buddha in it. And this is a shame. You've got people who came in here and wrote graffiti on the wall. You see the tile roof. Yeah, this is a nice little building. And then what's left of the little figures across the bottom here. So it looks like there would have been maybe about, I don't know, 10 or 12 of them. And then I don't know if there was any more up across the top or if it was just plain. And here's a platform. It would have probably had a Buddha seated on it. And then you got this chetty here that would have had a relic inside and probably like a Buddha facing the center prong. And yeah, that's in really good shape also. You can see the detail work up there. And it's one of these uh, rectangular bases with uh, 12 sides. And then outside of the little wall, this may not be part of the temple over here. This may be another, I don't know, it's uh, inside the outer wall, but it may not have originally been part of this whole temple. But you have two chetties over there, and those are fantastic. Wow, those are really nice. So let's walk over there and look at those, and then we'll come back over. So you can see this one here. It still has some of the plaster on the corners. Then it has some of the Buddha images there. Then it has like the flower works that you see right across the bottom of that bell. And the chetty itself at the very top is missing most of the plaster, but it still has the, the little top of the spire there. And then this one here is a Khmer style. And it does have one of the Buddha images right there but quite a bit of those are gone. And actually in the museum over in uh, 
downtown of this, this part of uh, Lobbury, they have some of those pieces that are in the museum that have come off, they've uh, excavated, and so they put them on the, in the museum for display. And it does have like a little platform here that probably had an image sitting there. And then you see across the bottom here that they had something decorated there, but now it's just the stone. But look at the size of the stones here on the bottom. And then they use the bricks up above, but they put it on a pretty good sized base. And then you can see up here, most of those Buddhas, just like the torso is remaining, the head and stuff is gone, but still pretty cool. And it has another little hall here and the base of like a chetty there and a couple more buildings. These are all outside of the low wall. So there was probably a, like a neighboring temple here at one time and now they've just kind of consolidated it all into the same ruin. And there's not much to see of this building. It has a couple little slits here for ventilation. And then uh, they would have had a Buddha image or something inside of here. But now all that's left is just the, the walls. It's in pretty good shape, but there's just not anything to see over here. You can see the, the construction of it, how much of the plaster is on the wall. But that does give you a nice view into this temple. It is just giant. giant. So this hall right here definitely looks like it's one that was added on later on. It's built in the, uh, the later Ayutthaya style. You can see the, uh, the detail work in the plaster, and then you can see how it's bowed in the middle. So it looks like a big bite has been taken out of the wall. And there's nothing inside there. There's no Buddha image or anything like that. It's just the, the four walls with no roof. So over here on the west side of this temple complex, you can see there's the center prong and then uh, has this big, huge hall. And it's got the, the pedestal there with, uh, with the what's remaining of the Buddhas. And then you can see that it had the supports here in the middle. There's six bases plus two up there by the, by the Buddhas. And it had a little balcony. So there would have been, this would have been covered here. And there would have probably been some images or something out here that you would have looked through the wall at. And then over there, probably like the, the seat for the, the monks. Then over here, you got another one of these little prongs. And check that out at the top. It's got the little figures all around it. Right below like the, kind of looks like a star fruit. And there's another building here. This little wee hand is just completely gone. There's several of these buildings that are just uh, nothing remain. And then here's like the top of a chetty that's uh, long gone. Another little chetty over there that's long gone. But let's look at this here again. Yeah, that is really, really cool. Let me zoom in a little bit. You can see the figures. Yeah, I don't know if you'd call that the Lobbery style or if it's like the uh, late Khmer style, but it's, uh, it's pretty cool. So here's another little chetty. You can see it's got quite a bit of the detail work right there at the top of the bell also. And then it has some of the, like the mural here part remaining. The other ones are gone on this side. It's just the raw brick. So you can see the standing Buddha images and then some of the plaster over here, which that's pretty nice. And then it has a base here and then another one of those kind of cool looking prongs or stupas over there. And we got a dog over here. He's over here thinking I might give him some food probably. Right here, so you can see the, the Buddha image there. And then you got some of the plaster remaining. And then up there, the Buddha image is gone. And almost they're all completely gone around the top of that. You can just kind of see the outlines remaining of the, the little figures that were around there. But this one here is probably the best preserved on this whole chetty. And then there's a couple more buildings and partial buildings over there. Nothing really noteworthy. And here's the outer wall again. And I made the mistake of getting out of it because you can't, you can only come in on the north and the south and uh, the east side. So you gotta kind of do a half a loop to get back in. So there's another building over here once we go through the gate. And the gate is quite massive. It's not as intricate as the ones you'll see like in Ayutthaya, 
but it's taller. And then uh, here we go. We got a couple more of the little prongs and another building over there. And then here's this inner wall. So you would have had seated Buddha images all in here. There would have been a Buddha here. And then if you look up, it would have been like the Lobbury style at the top, which in IOTI, you'd see all this is like really ornate, but here it's a little bit simpler and then more of the wall. And it doesn't look like we can get into this building. It looks like it's locked up. I don't see another door. Maybe there is on another side, but I don't think so. But you can see it's just the concrete. Yeah, that little building is locked up. So I wonder if that was the ordination hall. I don't see any of the remnants of any of the uh, Sema stones though. And then it has a couple bases of some of the chetties over here. And then you can see that big hall when you first come in. Now let's take a look at this prong. I've kind of saved the best for last here. It is colossal. Now it's 30.7 meters tall. So it is quite large. Now, just to kind of give you a little perspective of this, uh, the Nakompatom Chetty, the largest Buddha structure in the world, which is uh, to the west of Bangkok, about an hour, is 120 meters tall. So, <laughs> so you can stack four of these on top of each other, and that will be the size of the Nakompatom Chetty. But that's been uh, added onto. It's actually. Uh, had a smaller chetty like this, and they built over the top of it, and then they, uh, they built another chetty on top of that one, and now it's the third version of it. So if they kept building on the top of this one, maybe they could get up to uh, 120 meters. But I wouldn't recommend it, because this is way cool without doing anything. So you can still see quite a bit of the detail work in this prong. And you can see they've kind of shored up the front over here to keep it from collapsing down. And then you can still see quite a bit of the detail work. Like right there, it looks like some Naga. And then some of the uh, little figures around the plaster. Looks like some more Naga to the left of the door. Yeah, how cool is that? And you can see how, how big of bricks they use down here on the bottom. So they quarried these from around here somewhere, and then they, uh, they brought them in here. But you can still see a lot of the detail work, like right there. That is really nice. And you can see kind of some of the outlines of the figures. They're mostly gone. But that is really, really good shape. Yeah, this is nice. So this is kind of a nice view. So you got that concrete building there, and it is all the way locked up. Then they've supported this to keep it from falling over because the top arch has collapsed. So the two walls are unsupported. And then they have uh, quite a bit of the plaster work still remaining here. Yeah, this is awesome. This reminds me so much of the uh, prong that you see at the uh, that temple in Buriram. Because it has kind of this fake front with these naga right here. And you can kind of see it how it's just like a set of stones stacked up over the top of the door, all the way up there at the top. And all these little pieces will have, you know, they'll be carved figures of uh, Buddha, stuff like that. But uh, they've weathered out so bad. But it looks like you can actually get up here. So let's go up and see what it looks like. Yeah, so you can get up to the, you can get up into this prong here. So the stairs are right here. You see they're about a foot by a foot little cube. Whoa, there's not much to see here. So there's probably like a mural or a Buddha standing right here. Pigeon came flying out, scared the tar out of me. And then you can see just how tall it is. You can't even see the top from here. Yeah, and then you can see the plaster work that's still here. Yeah, that's just really, really cool. All the way up. And then up there, that's uh, just the bare rock. Looks like they had little flowers, little figures carved in. And they had some of the Buddhas here. Yeah, this is nice. Okay, so in that little uh, 
kind of building next to the prong that they've kind of braced up. It does have like a little relic chamber. And it looks like here would have been like the Hindu, uh, like they, the little Hindu thing that's uh, like their, uh, their little deity stone. And it's kind of dark and smells like, uh, smells like bats. So the bats have found a place in there. And this is looking towards that center or that first building we came into. And then you can see how they've had to brace this up to keep it from uh, falling in on itself. Yeah, there's nothing inside of the prong anymore. I don't know if there was at one time murals painted or just a Buddha, but there's nothing in there now. And here you can see how they've had to support this. So all of this has collapsed from below. So they've kind of had to uh, do kind of a funky design to keep it from falling in off on itself. So hopefully it doesn't collapse. This is too neat. And if you go to the Wat Mahahat in Ayutthaya, that center prong actually uh, collapsed in 1911, but it was quite a bit taller than this one. I think it was like 50 meters or so. And then you can see kind of around this whole complex. And in here is another one of those little alcoves. And it's just a place for pigeons now. Okay, so this is the last little building that we haven't looked at. So the roof is gone. It does have one column that looks like it's uh, in the Ayotia style because it's in uh, octagon shaped. So this is one that was probably added, you know, King Narai or somebody added this on. And it would have had three windows. They've closed that window off. And uh, they had the pedestal right here. Then you can see that little building from this side. And it's right up against another one of these chetties with that cool looking top. And it doesn't have any figures on this side that are still remaining. You can see just kind of a little tiny bit of them right there around that little lotus arch. And then there's some of the detail work there. And it's another one of those on the rectangular base. And then you can see what's remaining of the wall and uh, how it was constructed. And then the taller part right there. So that would have been about 12 meters tall or so. And then that would have been even below the top of the arch of the door of that, that big building. All right, guys, that finishes up our little tour of uh, Wat Paris Siri Maha Hat here in Lotbury, or however you say it. Anyway, it's got the Maha Hat, which you see that you see one in Bangkok, one in Ayutthaya, saw one down in uh, Nakomsi Tamarat. I, I don't know what it is about the Maha Hat or even what that means. If you know what it means, tell me down in the comments so I know. But anyway, this is a fantastic temple. This is a great time. This in itself is worth coming to Lotbury for. It's as nice as anything you'll see in Ayutthaya. And actually, I like this one better than the one in Ayutthaya. Just the, the prong is in better condition because that one at uh, Ayutthaya collapsed. And, uh, you know, it, it's kind of rough, but I mean, heck, this thing is, you know, six, seven hundred years old, however. I mean, 12th century, maybe. And because uh, it was, it predates Ayutthaya. So, you know, it's got the Khmer influence and all of that. So anyway, uh, for how old it is, it's in still really good shape. So hopefully you guys liked this video. I enjoyed making it. It was, uh, it was fun for me. So if you like it, make sure you click like. And uh, if you're new to my channel, this is the kind of videos I make. I just go and I film stuff of what I see. And uh, if you want to see more of this, subscribe to my channel and then you're notified when I post a new video. And uh, if you want to know something also, leave me a comment down below. If you have any questions or if you want me to see something different, tell me and I'll do my best to make a video of it. It's kind of what I do. I enjoy this kind of stuff. So uh, leave me a comment, like, and subscribe. And until next time, guys, remember, life is a journey. Enjoy. Oh.